Hey everyone, Happy New Year. I hope everyone enjoyed a safe and joyful holiday. Today's video, I'm going to be doing my bullet journal spread of books and scribbles where I can keep track of the books that I've read for the year and the summaries or takeaways that I've written for each book that I've read. For today's video, I'm going to talk about the five tips that I had to use for myself recently to overcome an experience called analysis paralysis, where for those of you who aren't familiar with that term, you're basically just stuck in thinking mode because you're overwhelmed by a project and that project is this bullet journal. So as I started my first bullet journal, I experienced the analysis paralysis experience because I was just really overwhelmed by all the different components that the bullet journal has. I was afraid it was going to lose its functionality of keeping me productive and being able to stay on track with my day-to-day -day tasks. Everyone has a different journey in how they overcome their mental and emotional blocks. So here are my five personal tips that helped me overcome this experience. The first tip is that good enough is good enough. When we are perfectionists, the details can send us spiraling down different rabbit holes and causes us to lose an immense amount of time over all the small details that don't make much of a difference. I've learned that simplifying things and being okay with the basics has helped me curb my obsessive need to fawn over every small detail. And then the second tip that I have is to have self-compassion. Sometimes I can be excruciatingly hard on myself and I'm a tyrant with how I choose to manage myself. Letting go of that authoritarian presence was crucial in being able to accept work that isn't perfect to my standards. I've struggled with self-compassion all my life. Originally, I wanted to be finished with this entire setup of my bullet journal by the new year, but my paralysis by analysis stopped me dead in my tracks. I was only freed from this anxiety when I allowed myself to go at my own pace and not get caught up with all the deadlines that I gave myself. And this was really important since I started to really enjoy creating the spreads and I didn't want to have to feel like I need to rush through it. Not finishing my bullet journal made me miss my weekly upload last week and I'm proud to say that I didn't allow myself to feel guilty about it even though I know it's important to be consistent on YouTube, but my channel is pretty much in its infancy and now it's the perfect time to go through all of these growing pains that I might need to go through. So the third tip is to break up the project into smaller steps. There were so many components to this journal that I had no idea where to start until I decided that I needed to start creating the parts that would allow me to start using it functionally before it's completely finished. So I started with the weeklies and the monthlies and my production just flowed from there. I catch myself in these situations all the time and I need to constantly remind myself that small and consistent steps are key to making progress. The fourth step is to understand why we are overthinking. When we are caught up in our thoughts, we don't tend to ask ourselves why we're doing it. When I finally asked myself this as I was overthinking my bullet journal journey, I discovered that I was afraid to show everyone the intimate details of my life. For some reason, I believed that I needed to share these details of my day-to-day -day activities, and I wasn't comfortable with that. Knowing this allowed me to plan on only showing the setup and designs and be okay with keeping the details of my private life to myself. The fifth and final step is to stop comparing yourself to others. Comparing our work to the work of other artists is, I believe, a pretty common habit for many of us. As I started researching about bullet journals, I kept coming across such beautiful and creative spreads that it started to really intimidate me, as I do not have that many ideas from my own journal, and I had to just stop myself from this bad habit and remember that these journals are mostly from people who have already been doing it for some time now 
and for me this is my first experience so those are my five tips to help me overcome my own recent analysis paralysis experience have you ever found yourself in a similar situation i'd love to hear how you overcame your own experience by sharing in the comments below as I've mentioned, this is only one spread of mine that I have for my bullet journal and what I plan to do is as I read books throughout the year, I'll fill in the title in an empty spine on the bookcase on the left. And when I do write a summary or a takeaway for that book, I'll write it in its corresponding book on the right over there. I don't plan on reading all of the books that you see on the bookshelves. So for any empty books at the end of the year, I'm going to just fill in the spines with some kind of basic design so it doesn't look empty. And I'm pretty excited to fill it out and see how much progress I make throughout the year with the books and the articles that I do write for it. I'm hoping to be able to finish my entire journal setup by the end of the month so I have it uploaded, but I do also want to be patient with myself and give myself the time to enjoy creating these ideas and spread, so I'll just keep making separate videos for them as I go along if that's the case. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye bye!